Welcome to Tuesday Meditation during Holy Week, and I'm glad that you have decided to join me in this time. This morning, uh, we're, well, it's actually, it's afternoon, so this afternoon we're going to begin with Psalm 71, and I'm going to read uh, verses 1 through 14 today. Hear the word of the Lord. In you, Lord, I have taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness, rescue me and deliver me. Turn your ear to me and save me. Be my rock of refuge to which I can always go. Give the command to save me, for you are my rock and my fortress. Deliver me, my God, from the hand of the wicked, from the grasp of those who are evil and cruel. For you have been my hope, sovereign Lord, my confidence since my youth. From birth I have relied on you. You brought me forth from my mother's womb. I will ever praise you. I have become a sign to many. You are my strong refuge. My mouth is filled with your praise, declaring your splendor all day long. Do not cast me away when I am old. Do not forsake me when my strength is gone. For my enemies speak against me. Those who wait to kill me conspire together. They say God has forsaken him. Pursue him and seize him, for no one will rescue him. Do not be far from me, my God. Come quickly, God, to help me. May my accusers perish in shame. May those who want to harm me be covered with scorn and disgrace. As for me, I will always have hope. I will praise you more and more. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Wanted to then turn this morning as we are continuing in our uh, Holy Week readings from the book of John. We're going to read from John chapter 12, uh, verses 20 through uh, 36. Hear the word of the Lord. Now, now there were some Greeks among those who went up to worship at the festival. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, with a request. Sir, they said, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went to tell Andrew, and Andrew and Philip, in turn, told Jesus. And Jesus replied, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Anyone who loves their life will lose it, while anyone who hates their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, my servant also will be. My Father will honor the one who serves me. Now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it was for this very reason I came to this hour. Father, glorify thy name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and will glorify it again. The crowd that was there and heard it said it thundered. Others said an angel had spoken to him. Jesus said this voice was for your benefit, not mine. Now is the time for judgment on this world. Now the prince of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to show the kind of death he was going to die. The crowd spoke up, We have heard from the law that the Messiah will remain forever, so how can you say the Son of Man will be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? Then Jesus told them, You are going to have the light just a little while longer. Walk while you have the light before darkness overtakes you. Whoever walks in the dark does not know where they are going. Believe in the light while you have the light so that you may become children of light. And when he had finished speaking, Jesus left and hid himself from them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So between the reading from yesterday and today, Jesus has already entered Jerusalem. Many people are coming out to see him. After all, word had spread that he had raised Lazarus from the dead. And so many people now are following him. Yet there is something something different about these Greek folks wanting to see Jesus. 
Something about their interest in him is significant to Jesus, although it doesn't mean anything to us, and it certainly didn't mean anything to the disciples. To Jesus, though, this is the sign that he has been waiting for. It's his t sign that time is up. It's time for his ministry to come to an end. It's time for him to give up his life. A seed is just one seed and nothing more, he says. But if it dies, that is, if it sacrifices and gives itself up, it produces many seeds. And Jesus knows he must sacrifice his life so that others may die and so that others may live, not die. His sacrificial death will bring life to others. And for Jesus, this is no longer an, oh, sometime I will have to do this, like it has been in the last three years. When those Greeks showed up, it becomes a reality for Jesus. And when this realization comes to him, it hit him hard, right down to his soul. Listen to verse 27. John writes, Now my soul is deeply troubled. On the one hand, Jesus says, should I pray, Father, save me from this hour? On the other, this is the reason I came. Jesus is troubled and distressed and scared. His suffering and his, and his passion, actually, that all began the very moment that he climbed down off of that donkey on Palm Sunday. The same week, Jesus cries over the city. He was angry at the way the temple had turned into a marketplace, and he was constantly being barraged by a pile of questions. He was tested all the time by the religious leaders. All of this happened in the days before he was arrested and tried, beaten, and crucified. But, but when he knew his time had come, it was real, and yet he didn't give it up. He didn't give anything up. Jesus knew he did have a choice. He could, as the message translates it, translation puts it, he could ask his father to get him out of this. But Jesus doesn't. Instead, he says, thy will be done. As we continue this week, may we too continue to willingly and lovingly give up our lives for others. So we don't we don't know when this stay-at-home order will be lifted, but Jesus does. He knows the places in your soul where you are troubled and where you are suffering. And he invites us to turn to him for comfort and for strength. And this today, I encourage you with these words that come to us from Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. It says, let us run with the endurance the race God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion, who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame. Now he is seated at the place of honor besides God's throne. Think of all the hostility he endured from sinful people. Then you won't become weary and give up. Let us pray. Christ our God, your love is poured out in death for our sakes. Hold us in your embrace as we await Easter's dawn. Comfort us with the promise that no power on earth, not even death itself, can separate us from your love and strengthen us to wait until you are revealed to us in all of your risen glory. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for joining me today. I will see you tomorrow.